Welcome to the Operate Podcast, where we give you a behind the scenes look at company building from the perspective of the builders themselves. This is how we operate. Welcome to the Operate Podcast. I'm Kerry Ransom. Today's episode is sponsored by Collective Genius and my friend Jeff Martin. They build high performing teams for venture backed growth companies and venture capital firms. Their peak planning operating system helps leadership teams with a three-year vision, one-year plan, quarterly OKRs, and the tools to stay on track along the way. I have several friends who've used it very successfully, and so hit me up with a message or uh, a note if you want to meet Jeff over at Peak Planning. I'm super excited to finally pin him down and get my friend Doug Holty with me on the Operate podcast today. And before we get to hear from him, which I'm excited to, let me tell you a bit about Doug. He's currently the founder and CEO of Agile Workweek Investments, which is his newest startup that is investing in disruptive technologies and modernized properties for a more efficient and agile workweek. His inspiration for AWI, as as we'll call it uh, abbreviated, really wasn't COVID, but rather it really accelerated by COVID as I would think about it. And we'll let Doug tell more about that. And is these are changes that we talked about and he began to see in how people wanted to live and and work several years ago. He's had an amazing career in commercial real estate, most recently as president of Irvine Company for the last 10 years prior to AWI. And longtime senior partner uh, running the West Coast, even for Heinz, a global and very well-known real estate firm. He's also currently a senior advisor to a new PropTech VC fund. He's, and he's on the board of many of the most important Orange County organizations like UCI Build Applied Innovation and the CEO Leadership Alliance. He is absolutely a visionary. He has an incredibly big heart for inclusive and collaborative and supportive community. And we have really bonded over that over the last few years. And Doug is a guy that just always leads by example. And I greatly appreciate him for that. I'm always inspired by our conversations. I appreciate his willingness to be my friend. And he's a great storyteller, which I know you will all get to experience today as well. I'm really excited to see him taking the plunge and be an entrepreneur as well. Doug, it is so great to finally have you here on the podcast. Terry, thank you. Uh, I'm blushing, and I feel like I should take a moment to reintroduce you to the world with that, uh, <laughs> with that, because uh, I couldn't be more excited at everything you've done and what you've been and what you represent for the future of Orange County and, uh, and the greater SoCal region. So thanks for letting me sh- spend some time with you. Oh, amazing. Well, let's start with Agile Workweek Investments and really its inception and your journey over the last almost year. Uh, why don't you share that with us as a jumping off point? Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Well, as, as often happens, I suspect um, ideas that start uh, to grow within a larger enterprise can, can often flourish more when they're taken out of that um, environment and put into maybe the more harsh but exciting environment of, of, of independent startup land. And so some years ago, I began uh, with the Irvine Company, uh, investing energy and organizing teams, both internal and, and external teams, around the idea of of really restoring the roots of the Irvine Company as being a a, a builder of thriving communities. Hmm. But what I found fascinating in the last couple of years in watching employers that uh, represented customers of the Irvine Company and others, um, I found that there was just enormous inefficiency and sort of lack of imagination in creating not just workplaces but a work week that allowed people to have thriving careers, have thriving personal and family relationships, uh, you know, conduct the things they needed to get done during the week in a way that was sensible in terms of uh, how they moved physically and, and also encountered each other digitally. And so in the end, I elected um, uh, to strike out on my own to take some of these principles and, and uh, passion themes into the free marketplace and look to invest with a little more freedom than I could at a large scale platform like the Irvine Company in early stage companies and uh, disruptive leaders who are looking to, I think, uh, deliver solutions and knit together alliances that will create a much more efficient and what we're calling an agile work week, um, which I think is going to advantage, and we'll talk about this, I think it's going to 
distinctly advantage um, certain metro regions like Orange County. Mm. Great, great start. Let's let's go a little bit, you know, one level deeper there. As you think about that criteria or principles around an agile work week, how how do you think about that? And you know, I would guess, given just your vision, you're you're probably way out in front of where a lot of other people are at this point. So let, let's yeah. just yeah, would love happy to, to tease happy yeah. to tease that out more. I think we all know, and you, you know, many of the companies that operate help start. Uh, your studio, I'm sure, are trying to address deeper uh, underlying cultural trends that are not just fads. And I think what, what has been clear in the past decade is the, the introduction at scale of the shared economy, where people feel that they don't need to own objects or mm-hmm. even services. They can borrow them, rent them, share them. That was a deep cultural trend. The drive toward digital efficiency to eliminate sort of unnecessary friction in physical markets uh, where people are trying to buy and sell services and goods. Those were deep cultural trends that were moving toward a more agile work week. And then I think now COVID, uh, which no one would have wished for a pandemic, but certainly it, it produced a disruption to our patterns, our expected patterns of synchronous work weeks where we all come to a geo-based place at the same time and wait for the technology and the people to be there for us to get good work done. I think what we've discovered is that although the digital world of getting work done is is not perfect or or probably um, the only way we want to work, um, it, it it contributed, I think, a disruption for us to see we can get a lot of work done in a digital fashion. And now the question becomes, how can we use those deeper cultural trends, a shared economy, a more friction free, um, and digital and direct um, ecosystem. How can we harness that and break patterns of feeling like uh, we have to return to an old synchronous geo-based work week and instead start to work in asynchronous ways, harnessing you know even better technology to stay. I think one of the things we'll talk about here in this conversation is the false choice that a lot of people are, are um, presenting between either uh, having a connected, human experience in a physical workplace every day or being digitally isolated in in a home office, that's a false choice. I think Mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to redesign the work week to get the best of both worlds and have what I'll call more intentionality toward everything we do to design a work week where people, again, can have more efficient, healthy, and and productive um, professional and personal experiences. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. So let me let me fire off a few uh, you know sort of questions that immediately uh, come to me around this. So as you think about you know you're calling it work week, yeah. Does this now almost need to just get redefined as week, where that ah, it's you know works point. just getting yeah, yeah. And so I and, and I guess what I'm where where I'm ahead is there is does this now re you know if, if you think about the world that we we've, we've been living in it a lot of the, my prioritized decisions have been about where i'm working and then my life gets planned in many cases around that yes and is this now reorienting i i mean i think i saw as recently as as today that housing prices are going up farther away from the city centers in in the last years, six months, because people are accepting, I may have to have a longer commute occasionally now, but, but maybe yes. it's not every day. So do we change this now to week and say, it's really make, you know, your prioritization stack may start with where do you want to spend your life? Where do you yes. want to live? And then your other choices may be able to rank underneath that. Is that, I mean, do you see that profoundly changing? Yes, I think I think that it is as profound as saying we are going to bend the boundaries of space and time going forward if mm-hmm. we get this right and don't squander it. Meaning that we now, because we can queue up um, work work efforts and work processes in a way that uh, that doesn't require synchronous behavior, mm-hmm. you know, bounded by time, that's going to introduce some fascinating opportunities, as you're saying, for people to integrate their life and work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that we all learned in the last decade that. There was a bit of a, um, it was almost silly to talk about work-life balance because yes. digital tools basically introduced um, 
the blurring of home and work and in between home and work. And so there was no real way to, to strike a perfect balance. You just had to find ways to integrate your work week and your personal life during the same week. So I think you're right that now we have, we have, you know, we have an un, uninterrupted week and month and year of our lives that we have to work smartly and choose when to go to physical places to get great work done. Uh, uh, and, um, so I think we're, we're bending the boundaries of space for sure as well, that now people will be able to, again, if, if, if smart employers get it right, they can offer the opportunity to access talent anywhere around the world at any time. And then they can curate workplace experiences where people come together with the right tools and technology and the right sort of intentional um, desired outcomes and come together physically to get some things done and to build trust and friendship. Mm -hmm. um, that that helps business get done. So I think yeah, I think we're absolutely breaking free um, of of those historical boundaries. I mean, in a sense, people think of this as a once in a generation play. Arguably, this is much more significant than that. I mean, we are we are changing how humans experience a work week, and we have some great opportunities to therefore allow people to migrate again physically and digitally mm -hmm. different. Yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, it's a fascinating, it, it's sort of, I'm sitting here and it occurs to me, I mean, I, I had the pull to California, I grew up, as you know, in the middle of the country, and I felt the pull to California in my teens, because it just felt like it fit me. It was the, the land of ideas and creativity, and the weather was meaningfully more enjoyable, yeah. and you could live this, uh, this you know sort of uh, outdoor existence, which just was really enticing. I finally made it here. It took me longer than I had hoped. Huh. And you know, I've said to many people over the years, I've I've sort of succeeded despite my choices. And what I often mean by that is, I probably should have, in the the former world, lived in Silicon Valley, lived in San Francisco, because I've been in and around the the technology world now for 25 years and I've managed to, to do okay without ever working, living in the heart of it mm. and having an amazing life and not giving it over to that historical work week, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I, I don't know that I'm more enlightened. I think I just was maybe more will more stubborn about it or something than than most but i feel well, like you were you were an early adopter at, of, of something pretty profound you know the idea of you know live 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 where you are most happy and um most connected to your value system and then uh find work physically and digitally mm -hmm. that that aligns with that i think we are going to have some amazing outcomes positive outcomes after a year of a lot of um, frustration and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, examples. You know, working parents now will have new choices. I think to right. reinvest them their talents in the marketplace without having to um, necessarily uh, outsource <laughs> their parenting mm -hmm. the way they might have had to in the past. People won't have to leave a thriving neighborhood and set of friendships and maybe um, educational resources for their family in order to go match up with a geo-based job. And, uh, and again, people can choose to start um, and maybe end their careers in a place that is a more medium-sized uh, physical marketplace and still connect to amazing enterprises that are in some larger or distant location. Mm -hmm. Are there any institutions or elements in that newly imagined week that you think are missing or unsolved? If I, if I have to think about my life week as, call it, you know, where I live, how I live, yeah. where I work, how I work, where I play, how I play, is there, yeah. you know, is, is, there, is there a missing, is there a fourth one maybe that is, is missing? You know, I, I know you and I have talked a lot about community. That one I still, some, maybe yeah. that fits in play a little bit, maybe it fits in live a little bit, and maybe in work a little bit too, but but. Like, is there a more intentional community? Because, because we do still have this human 
need for physical gathering. I think for, yes. most, of, for most of us, for, for, for most the context I mean, I know that, of it could change radically. Yes. I think let's, let's stay with this thread. So we, we know that, that the pandemic experience and, and the new options for how to work um, provide some, some really special advantages to individuals that, that are personally wired and maybe professionally skilled at um, individual focus work tasks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can say this is going to give new opportunities for the introverts of the world to engage mm -hmm. in the work they love without being distracted by, you know, yes. large scale physical enterprises and all that. Um, but I think let's stay with your thread. I think the missing links, if you want to call it that, are, are, are going to be, I hope, I'm optimistic, are going to be solved by, I'll call it version 2.0 of everything, um, which is even better <clears throat> tools for, for um, sort of ubiquitous, um, well-organized um, communication tools to keep people connected with what's going on with their work relationships and work, work tasks and processes. Uh, 2.0 virtual reality, I'm loosely 2.0, mm -hmm. is going to allow people to feel much more intimately connected to people that are distant mm -hmm. physically. And, um, but the biggest challenge I think Carrie, that I'm seeing right now talking to employers and even landlords and architects and other advisors in the in the physical property industry, if I will, if I could say, the biggest challenge right now is imagination and leadership. Because many, maybe even most leaders and enterprises are not, for whatever reason, investing in imagining a future work week and designing their organizational chart, mm -hmm. designing their technologies and then designing their workplaces around the flexibility and options that now exist. And again, much of it is just, we have a challenging human habit of wanting mm -hmm. to find some comfort in old patterns. Yeah, inertia is very powerful. Yeah, yes. I'm, sorry, I'm finding many, many employers disappointingly are saying, well, we'll just have people come back to work as, as, uh, as the pandemic subsides in our memory. We'll just have people come back to work and we'll figure it out. And my question is figure what out? Mm. Um, exercise some leadership. Why don't you think about new roles that didn't exist in the past that should exist in the future? Think about new ways to have alliances and partnerships in business that, again, access the best services and talent without just having to access it locally. But then also use your local relationships even better during the work week to bring, I think the other, the other answer to your question is there are certain property types um, office properties, retail properties, business hotels that have an opportunity to redesign themselves to support a more agile and, um, and uh, collaborative work week. Mm -hmm. So that when people do come together, they get better work done. They have even more remarkable innovation and collaboration. So it's gonna be investment of imagination, capital, and trying to rethink the patterns for uh, various industries, first and foremost being, mm -hmm. you know, physical property. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and let's, let's continue on that physical property. Is, have you discovered one somewhere in, in your travels now in the last almost year that just blew your mind as this, you know, maybe not here locally, mm -hmm. but in some place where you said, wow, they really understand this future and our, our, well positioned to really because it well, could be some far flung remote retreat location somewhere or it could be something in the middle of the city for all i know I, it's just yeah i think it, i think that you're seeing people whether it's country or city locations that are inventing new services and experiences for their their existing properties and that includes some leisure and business hotels that are adding digital technology mm -hmm. and redesigning convening spaces to be more appealing and efficient for enterprises that, that uh, come uh, either episodically or regularly. So some of that's happening all over the country in small, medium and large cities, um, not as much as I might like, but I'll give you um, a local example and um, coming to a town near you, meaning, um, and more will come out on this mm -hmm. soon, but in the city of Anaheim, we have a local a family, the Samueli family, that's mm -hmm. that's investing in something quite remarkable, which is the creation of a hundred-acre new hub called OC Vibe, 
that in many ways, and I'm privileged to be part of the team advising the family and, uh, and, and the organization, and they're in the process of designing something that's going to have curated live experiences that really blur the lines between live, work, play, convene. Mm-hmm. And so even in our own hometown, there are, there are some experiments, laboratories that are being created. Um, I would say that it's more company by company where you're seeing some bold breakthroughs. There are some technology and, and uh, science-based companies that are doing pilot projects to, again, be more intentional about having services and spaces and tools available to their workforce to work uh, together in an HQ location, together in a remote location, or in a hybrid manner where some people are at the HQ location and some people are not. I think it's company by company. And mm-hmm. I'm just hopeful that there'll be metro regions like Orange County and companies, leading companies that will, that will launch more pilot projects that we can then learn from mm-hmm. and evolve and not just again, try to return to a, what I would consider to be a 20th century model of yeah. factory work yep. where you have to come, come there to get any work done. Well, if, because I, I totally agree. Because if you think about it, you know, the factory work, I mean, our education system was built to produce factory yes. workers. And then, you know, the, the upgrade to that was factory work in an office. Yes. It was a cubicle or something. And, Correct. and so you're, you're spot on. And, you know, it, it, I'm sitting here as you're describing this OC Vibe project, which I find really fascinating. And I think, okay, how many offices, permanent offices with permanent residents should a project like that even have if it's going ground up today? Yes. You may yes. need work spaces, but what does that look like? Is that a, you know, a bunch of different people that share it and they use it on a rotational. It's just so much fun to, to imagine what's going to create the most thriving humans on a day-to-day interactive basis. Around well, it sounds like you're, it sounds like you're, 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 <laughs> you're teasing me into uh, hinting at a future state that I hope to be part of, which is in the, in the future, we, we uh, at Agile Workweek Investments or AWI, there's, it's a small group of us and we hope to create a portfolio of California locations that have where we recycle uh, what we would have called office properties into mm-hmm. thriving workplace communities that have all the elements of agility and lifelong learning and that the buildings are designed to be a living organism where enterprises are meeting each other, they're exchanging best practices, they're connected to the, the healthcare and educational resources of their community. Mm-hmm. So I think there's an entirely unlimited opportunity to reimagine what an, an, a workplace community can be and how that creates, again, back to your early comments, how that creates a truly inclusive um, set of relationships where all of the local talent and regional talent is being offered opportunities to connect to important enterprises. And I just, I just think it's, it's a thrilling time, but it's going to take capital. Mm -hmm. It's going to take human investment of energy and risk. It's going to take leadership to Mm -hmm. force some choices. I think that's another thing that is not yet being experienced is the leaders of businesses must do a better job at explaining the choices to their workforce mm-hmm. that as we consider one company at a time, what's the right balance of physical work and digital work? Um, it should be communicated effectively and consistently why one particular enterprise has one model that works for them and another enterprise has a different one. It's, there's a lot of, as you can imagine, there's a lot of universal statements being made that everyone needs to come back to work. Yes. and when people say that, they usually mean everyone needs to come back to an office. Mm-hmm. And, other, and other people say, you know, Spotify and a bunch of other, you know, kind of digitally launched companies will say, you know, no one needs to come back to a physical workplace right. other than when they want and where they want. And the answer really, of course, should be each enterprise needs to right. design its, its appropriate solution. Mm-hmm. As you think about your investment theses, do you do you think the connective tissue is geography? Is it thematic? What 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 do you feel like is is kind of driving? If if you were going to take a physical place mm-hmm. to redevelop and reimagine, 
it's, it's, it's a great question, Kerry. Thank you for helping to shape my own thought by that, that, by that good, good question. I think it's probably more thematic mm. with a meaningful side order of geography. Mm -hmm. So the thematic play is that we are still early in the process of connecting human activities in a less separated way, education, healthcare, the uh, you know family um, priorities, family experiences, um, and uh, and for forming and th and growing enterprises to produce products and services that the world mm -hmm. needs, um, and and the, and the built environment, the physical environment. Sorry, the natural physical environment. I think we have separated those activities in a 20th century model, mm -hmm. um, and we're now in the process of figuring out how do we knit those together. So you can imagine a future state of, let's just say American enterprise, certainly it can happen in its own way outside of the US, but American enterprises have the opportunity to connect with institutions of, of important human activity and, and, and advancement like education, higher ed, reskilling of America through vocational mm -hmm. ed, um, obviously healthcare, both physical and digital healthcare. There are, we need to have new conversations. And some of those thankfully are happening in Orange County, which is, I know why you and I are excited about Orange County's future competitive advantages um, to attract and retain talent and enterprises. Orange County has a remarkable opportunity to be unburdened by um, institutions or bureaucracies that, that wanna constrain innovation. Mm -hmm. um, there's no one big city here. Okay. You know, we have all kinds of companies and industries. We have pretty agile institutions of higher education and healthcare that are anxious and active and connecting with private enterprise. Mm -hmm. So I think Orange County is really well positioned to play into the thematic um, uh, future state that I'm just, that I'm sharing sharing mm -hmm. here. That you end up with again individuals and enterprises that feel like throughout the work week and the work year, they're, um, they have a more integrated life. It's more integrated, it's more mm -hmm. intentional, you're fully accessing services and resources. Um, and, and I think that's a way that, that one of the, I'll, I'll read, read ahead here for a moment and say, one of the challenges in the real estate industry, which may be different than other industries you invest in, is that the cap, the providers of financial capital have their own business model Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to persuade them that new ways of being more agile in the way that products and services are priced and bundled and sold, that there's a better way to do it that's different than what they're familiar with. And in the case of sure. commercial properties, the example is lenders make loans on long-term lease contracts. Yeah. That's right. And it's unfamiliar for them to say, what if we had a whole new world of more short-term contracts with more agility Right. And that actually might produce more higher, stable and valuable, right. higher value. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's even, I mean, it, it's funny. I'm smiling because I feel like, you know, we were talking a little bit before about how do you find the like-minded investors? And, you know, I think what I've sort of come to the conclusion of is it's really hard to convince somebody who's not like-minded to become like-minded with yes. you and yes. you're better off just going and finding the like-minded or uh, more open-minded people because if somebody's used to near-term cash flow and that is like that is the way they derive their value for their investment it's really I mean I go to the extreme opposite end obviously in the way that I do things around just equity long-term uh, and, and that return through a diversified portfolio is how you ultimately recoup your, your cash flows, if you will, just defer, defer, defer to, to big, lumpy, chunky uncertainty in the future, which I've weirdly become comfortable with. But right. trying to convince somebody who's not at all familiar with that is a challenge for sure, yeah. right? Well, and I, th I think what's going to be interesting in real estate in the future, Kerry, is that there's going to probably be like-minded or call it, you know, forward thinking investors that are, my guess is they will be individuals and families more mm -hmm. than institutions that will see a future that has, again, these new types of connectivity between all elements of life, not just right. work, 
And those individual investors or family offices or what have you, I think are probably going to be the ones, many of them will have created their own wealth through disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. And that may be the best like-minded investors for a disruptive approach to creating physical workplaces yes. that are better connected to the rest of, of life. Does that make sense? For sure. I mean, and I, I summarize it in one word, Doug, which is belief. You have to have yeah. belief that the world's going to be different, that you can help even shape and contribute to that difference yeah, and, in and, a meaningful and, and, and way. And, I mean, that, yeah, it's more than joy, just joy. returns, right? Financial right. returns. Yeah, that's right. You have to have a certain joy in efficiency or uh, what I like about like my three adult daughters are great sounding boards for me because they'll describe how ridiculous they find certain categories of inefficiency in yes. the work week. And so that generation finds friction and inefficiency to be kind of absurd. Yes. And the great thing is that disrupts the rest of us who have been around operating under these belief systems, as mm. you call it, that we thought were fixed and they're not fixed. That's right. So now the question becomes, how do we together in an optimistic way work to eliminate efficient inefficiency and, and, and create again, more choice, flexibility, and, and, uh, actually better outcomes. It's kind of like the sustainability movement. 20 years mm -hmm. ago, there was a lot of talk about the, what was then called the green movement as being fringe and, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, tree huggers and everything. And many of us that were excited about it then had to shift the language to say, what's so great about wasting resources? Is, does anybody really find that to be a good idea? Mm -hmm. Let's be smarter and better. So I think we have an element of that now of saying, what's so great about an, a fixed geo-based uh, scarcity-based, inefficient work week. Nothing. I mean, 40% of the office desks in America are unused at any one time on average, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people are spending two to three hours a day round trip commuting, listening to podcasts to try to numb themselves from all the inefficiency of, of, of synchronous commute hour mm -hmm. travel. Well, what's so great about that? Let's be, let's be better. That's right. Yeah, so many great and, and I think to your point, the, the younger generation is just demanding it, which is awesome. Yes. For those yes. of us they who will, have they been will thinking this will. way. That's right. Yes. I, I mean, my goal is how do we elevate them into decision-making positions as early as possible so exactly. they can lead it. I mean, you, you mentioned leadership a few times. And I think, you know, it's not an, an exhibition of leadership to hold on to old thinking for too long. That is actually, I think from your and my perspective, probably the opposite of that. I think leadership is being bold enough to bring others into those positions who are probably the better equipped to lead from here. Yeah, we used to say at the Roman Company, we, like, we wanted to be informed by the past, but not burdened by it. So I think that I think that the young generation can interact with the older generation to to use what's best about a physical work week, mm -hmm. right? Because there still are elements of it that, sure. that the best sometimes the best work is done. Oh, for sure. In a physical environment where people have the time and space to to think boldly, to challenge each other, and um, so I, I'm I'm very excited. I think again, Orange County is distinctly advantaged. It seems to me uh, for this for this future this future uh, state. And I want to come back to that in a second and, and yeah. give a little more depth on, on why you think that is. First, what have you learned about yourself over the last year that you really didn't realize until you have went on this journey? Well, I, I, I had shared with you earlier that I entered into a version of your world that I was unfamiliar with in the past seven or eight months, which is early stage investing in entrepreneurial companies that mm -hmm. are inventing disruptive technologies to make real estate more efficient and intelligent. And I've learned about myself that that was a whole category that I was unfamiliar with that, you know, coming up with a, a new product or service to meet an, an unmet need in the market, and then having to persuade financial capital and early adopter customers to get on board with it. Boy, that is, that is a heavy lift. It's impressive when you and Kyle and others in your organization um, have that kind of zealotry, you know, zealousness mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. we, we see a future and to help others. So I think I've learned about myself and maybe others that the importance of imagination together with execution is really um, should be at a premium. 
in 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 the marketplace and and and, and um but then the other the other point I've seen learned about myself is you have to be prepared or learn for myself is you have to be prepared to discard or delay some ideas that are too early or too bold. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, there's no way to know, you know, to exactly when to say that, but let me give you an example. So I'm fascinated by the inefficiency of higher education mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the inadequate connection between much of American four-year education and uh, work force priorities. Yes. Some do it better than others. UCI and Chapman and Fullerton here, I think, are doing really great work to connect the community colleges to connect curriculum and uh, and uh, and the uh, the student body with future adult career opportunities. But much of America, I mean, there's four or five thousand four-year colleges in America, and many of them are very disconnected from the reality of the work the, the work week and the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But uh, in trying to be part of redesigning higher ed, including redesigning the physical plant of higher ed to be ready for a new future of, of uh, digital learning, et cetera, th there are aspects of it that are just like boiling the ocean. They're too big to take on. So then I think I've learned about myself the importance of having the mentality that you probably instill in your companies you invest in, making sure you curate a, a sort of minimum viable product or a pilot project and learn, learn from that something that you can inject mm. into the market that will, that will meet or create customer demand and not again, try to think holistically, right? And in, 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 a, in a systemic way, but act in a, in a more narrow way. I guess I've learned mm. that a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great, a great point and very instructive to almost any entrepreneur or anyone trying to yeah, I, I tell founders every day, I, I'm not really concerned about your vision. Mm. Usually there's plenty of vision. It's about, can you act in a way that will ever give you an opportunity to reach that vision? Yeah, and, but, and it's okay, I suspect we both agree, it's okay to fit it in your personal mind and spirit, fit your big vision into a motivator for you that you get up every morning. That's right. I guess we no longer say every Monday morning, but you get up every morning <laughs> saying, hey, I'm contributing, you know, for me, it would be, I'm contributing to a more thriving and efficient um, work week. Mm -hmm. You know, so does that mean that I, that, you know, I get to be the czar of redesigning the American work week everywhere for everyone? No, but it, you know, I can chip away or produce some, deliver some enhanced product or service that contributes to a, a bigger future state. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely makes sense. Okay, let's go back to your point that you believe Orange County is really well positioned to mm. uh, benefit from this huge change that's yeah. that's occurring and, and has occurred. You know, we talked a little bit about the fact that there isn't a central city or controlling entity. You know, just to, to clarify with people, there are 34 distinctive cities here in Orange County. I mean, obviously there are certain names like a Irvine or Newport Beach or Anaheim, as you mentioned, that they get a lot of the credit as business centers. But there's a ton of diversity here, which yep. I think you and I greatly appreciate. So as you think about the elements that you believe distinctively give this area advantage, what what how would you characterize those? Well, um, I think that Orange County is, is there, there's a great book called The Accidental Superpower about America stumbling into <laughs> global leadership um, almost against its will. And to some extent, I feel like Orange County is the accidental super region mm. where we have this opportunity to use our, 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 lo our geographic location, you know, in the middle of this 20 million person international economy, mm -hmm. right? It's like its own country, Southern California. But we also have this, this freedom and independence, but at scale. So you can have a small, cute city or metro area that everyone can get together and collaborate and be innovative, but they, they don't have any scale or real impact. But then you can have places of scale that are ungovernable and they can't convene all the necessary voices, either because of historical um, battles or bureaucracy or what have you. I think Orange County has this remarkable combination of sort of very healthy attributes, meaning ethnic diversity, 
um, cultural diversity. Now that needs to be discovered, surfaced, mm -hmm. and marketed more effectively yes. for what it really is, not, not what th people think it was. But there's all this diversity. There's this incredible location in the center of Southern California. There's 34 independent cities competing for talent and attention. But there's the ability to convene as the CEO Leadership Alliance is doing and others as, uh, as well. There's the ability to convene um, thought leaders and business practice leaders across disciplines to talk about important connections uh, that create healthy communities. So the fact that you can convene, but then there's scale, there's the blessings of location, um, and there's intentionality too, I think, by the institutions, as I said earlier, that have longevity and resources, you know, amazing healthcare institutions that are creating entirely new practices for, uh, for data-driven healthcare and tele, uh, you know, and digital healthcare and lifelong healthcare and integrative healthcare like the Samuelis are investing mm -hmm. in at UCI. There's healthcare institutions, educational institutions where there's great innovation here in Orange County and then business organizations that can convene literally in one place and talk about creating a better future for all communities, both you know, municipal communities and, and communities of interest or other kinds of um, uh, uh, criteria. I think that's a really unusual play. And again, it doesn't hurt to have a brand that can be sort of properly channeled that is a forward thinking brand in terms of lifestyle and culture. So all of that knits together in a way that if we, if we get it right, and I know that you know, to tout the, uh, the, the marketing campaign that's launching in the fall called Envision, Euro, Envision OC, envisionoc.org, the current website and the tools and events that are gonna come from that next, the rest of this year and next year, I think we have an opportunity to position Orange County as not the only, but one of the most remarkable places to start a family and a career and a business. And uh, we should not be granting Austin and Nashville the future. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, we and I, we agree wholeheartedly on that. As you think about what what helps us close maybe any gaps that might exist right now. I mean, you know, we talk a lot. And I've, I've had a lot of folks on here where we've talked about the fact that it's not. It doesn't, it, it's not, a, we don't have a well-connected, particularly entrepreneurial community. I have a lot of entrepreneurs in my that audience. That is true. That is a gap, and, yes. you know, it, I've always said we should advance, we should find any and all ways to advantage entrepreneurs here to start their company here and grow it here, even if it doesn't mean they have a central office everybody comes into every day, obviously, but that, you know, having some roots and ties and support systems here are critical. To me, that's a gap. How do, how do you think we, we close that? Well, so there, there are a few folks, myself being one, um, that intend to create physical places that express this connectivity and sort of um, cultural advantages. And mm -hmm. that'll occur over time. So I think physical hubs and places that people can convene and, and, uh, and, and begin to collaborate in ways mm -hmm. that I think will uh, will be powerful. That's going to happen over time, and local entrepreneurs are going to are going to need to participate in that. I think we're going to have to make sure we continue to press the institutions that exist, including groups like OC Business Council and Octane and and uh, and CEO Leadership Alliance to to role model and story tell what we mean by Orange County as a you know remarkably well positioned um, marketplace for the future. Um, and then I think that, um, as you said, um, persuading financial, those with financial resources, persuading them to recycle those financial resources mm -hmm. into growing uh, enterprises and even industries in Orange County. We've got a lot of work to do on that. I I'm optimistic. I know you are too, that we're going to get there. So much of Orange County wealth was created in the last 50 years from real estate. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that Many of those individuals think that the best way to invest their real estate profits is in more real estate. Outside the and, area in many cases. Well, that too. That yeah. too. Yeah, too. And so we've got work to do. I think some of us in real estate need to begin having a voice into the need to recycle real estate profits, the, 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 the good fortune of the last 50 years, recycle that into 
ventures that are going to create products and services for the next 50 years that, uh, you know, that, that are not just real estate. I mean, Orange County is not built out, but it's approaching what real estate folks would call uh, sort of 1.0 build out. Mm -hmm. I and mean, Irvine Ranch is probably within five to seven years of completing its 1960 master plan mm -hmm. for homes, shopping centers, office buildings, and, um, uh, and, uh, and apartments, rent, rental housing. Mm -hmm. You know, Rancho Mission Viejo has work to do and product to still deliver, but it will reach a conclusion of its sure. version 1.0. So Orange County is finishing its sort of adolescent years almost. And now we have to start recycling ourselves and storytelling and role modeling what it means to be, a, again, an innovative community, not just a place that's uh, taking great land and putting mm -hmm. um, shelter and business, business uh, buildings on it. Doug, such great perspective. Thank you. I uh, I feel like this could be a recurring conversation we could record every every week. So, unfortunately, you know, coming up on time here uh, uh, on the show, what are you most excited about as as we've started to get back together again in physical yeah. connection. I mean, you and I aren't, aren't together right now, but we have been thankfully, and, and I think will be, but what, what are you most excited about there? Yeah, thanks for asking. Well, excited about conversations with, with people that cut across and connect across um, industries. That's gonna be the biggest opportunity. You mm -hmm. think about it, Steve Jobs used to say that, you know, his brilliance was looking outside of traditional technology yes. and finding, finding connections with culture and other products and services. And then rebundle. Re I think Orange County for you and me and others, the most exciting thing will be reconvening with leaders across institutions and categories, and um, and starting to talk about near-term expressions of our competitive advantages. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm most excited about. We're ready to reconvene and start advancing, not just sort of aspirational marketing, but advancing real stories about real companies and real leaders and real connections across industries that'll that'll matter. I think the, again, the easy one being healthcare and med tech connecting in with say gaming and VR and digital technologies. Orange County could be amazing as a place for sort of the next higher level of lifelong education and lifelong health. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it, Karen. I appreciate being on the show. And again, you and I will have to continue the conversation somewhere over coffee or beer. Absolutely. Last question. Yeah. I mean, and I think you, you, you hinted at it as a great example, you know, given the, the entrepreneurs that I have or the, the, the aspiring entrepreneurs that we want to pull out of more of the woodwork here, what advice would you have for people who are thinking about these changes to the week, the work week, living preferences, and maybe they have a company or thinking about building a company around those changes? Huh. I got to think a little more about that. I mean, I would say, I guess, you know, look, look to great leaders that are advancing the idea of, of a, you know, thoughtful, um, fully integrated work week. I think we have leaders here that are doing that in Orange County. Um, certainly connect in with the leaders within um, higher ed that are doing some great work to talk about, um, you know, how to, uh, how to be smarter and better. There are great podcasts. I mean, the Agile Work Week is being advanced by people like um, Dror Polig and others that are that are thinking about how the the um, you know the, the the new world can can harness technology and culture in ways that are um, that are again healthier, more efficient. I think there's there's lots of opportunity to learn from locals and learn from um, global global mm -hmm. thought leaders. Amazing. Doug, thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Kerry. Really always appreciate your wisdom and perspective. And I, I am so excited to see what this new set of investments and projects that, that you'll be leading are as you start to reveal them and uh, always enjoy the conversation. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Operate Podcast. If you like this conversation, as a favor to me, you can rate us, review us, or subscribe, or tell your friends. You can also reach out to us on Twitter at Operate Podcast. Until next week, get out there and operate.